Today, I want to talk to you about the exciting topic of artificial intelligence, my favorite tools and how I'm actually using them on a daily basis. Now, no, of course, you've been waiting exactly for the video because there are only three and a half million other videos out there covering the topic of AI. But in all seriousness, right now, actually, we're in a situation where the biggest player of all, ChatGPT, is actually using a little bit of the initial steam they had when everybody was rushing to it and was playing around with it. Right now, it's coming down. The website traffic is down for the last three months. And that's when I usually like to talk about it because in the middle of the hype cycle, when everybody talks about it, I try to go another way. In this video, I really want to cover the tools that I'm really personally using myself. And hopefully it will inspire you to use some of those tools and help you to optimize Streamland and make your life easier on a daily basis. And to kick things off, my favorite saying about AI is actually, AI is not going to take your job. But a person knowing how to use AI most probably will. So I really think this topic is so relevant, not just in the world of investing and finance, but pretty much any industry is at risk of being disrupted by AI. So I think it's really, really crucial that we understand it and use the technology to our advantage. Now, currently, these are the 50 most used AI tools on the web by monthly visits. And you can see, of course, the most popular being ChatGPT. Then there is Character AI, which is also a popular one that I'm not using, but a lot of people seem to be enjoying that. Of course, Google's Bard is there, Poll, Quillboard, quite a number of them that I actually haven't used them myself. So you can see really this list keeps on growing. In the beginning, there was only one, two, but now a lot of the platforms coming up with their own kind of AI. I do think it's great for us as users to have more platforms that we can tap into. At the same time, it can also be quite overwhelming and sometimes having so much choice in the end, you might end up using none of them. So yeah, that's why I think I just want to share with you some of the ones that I'm actually using on a daily basis. And the first one is without surprise, of course, ChatGPT. I mean, that's the tool I've been using for the longest of times and I really started loving it so much and use it really on a daily basis. In the beginning, I just tried to play around with a few times here and there, but I really wanted to force myself to use it more because I was really so impressed with the answers it gave me. And that's when I decided to sign up actually for ChatGPT+, Plus, which costs $20 per month. But honestly, in my eyes, it's really reasonable. At work, for example, in the company where I'm working, we used to pay a copywriter 200 euros to write us one article. Now I can achieve the same much faster, easier and better using ChatGPT to get those articles out. So I really think $20 is really a fair investment into such a powerful tool. And honestly, for me, I would even pay more if it was more. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with this. Now, obviously, you could use the free version, which is uh, ChatGPT 3.5. It might be a little bit limited if the traffic is busy, etc. And ChatGPT 3.5 is obviously not as advanced as 4.0. And you get also access to plugins, which is really cool. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of plugins. You can go to the plugin store over here and more and more coming up all the time. Uh, so you can see some of the ones I'm using and uh, even Canva right now. So you could ask ChatGPT to come up with certain designs. It would then push to Canva and they would do the designs for you. So it's really, really powerful. They also have uh, PDF readers where you can just upload a PDF and it will then summarize the PDF for you, etc. Link reader is quite powerful. Um, what I'm using mostly right now is web reader because sadly recently they disabled the Bing functionality where you can search Bing websites with ChatGPT. So somehow that was disabled for some reason. Uh, so I'm using WebPilot to get the latest information because still sometimes ChatGPT I think only goes until 2021 and um, most of the content. So you can't really ask it anything recent if I asked them to do a stock analysis, let's say, and it would be stopped at 2021. But using something like WebPilot, they also have some other investing tools. I can put the most recent information on that particular stock if I wanted to. VoxScript is another great one. For example, you could read any YouTube video that you like. You could ask it to summarize it or anything that you like about the video. Or for example, for your own video, if you create a video and then just ask ChatGPT to write a blog post or a newsletter based on your own video. So it can be really powerful. And I really love those extensions, even though most of the time, actually, I just search in default and then ask anything I want. Now, one very crucial and important thing about ChatGPT, because a lot of people that are here after they played around with say, well, it's actually not that good. You know, it gives you a lot of generic answers. And honestly, it's like anything in life. The better you ask your question and provide context to ChatGPT, the better your answer is going to be. If you just ask a random question or task to do, write me an inspiring Instagram post, it doesn't know anything about you. How can it write something that really fits? But the more you feed it and really give a lot of insights to ChatGPT, the better it will be. And honestly, I've really spent time developing it, watching a lot of videos, how to prompt. It's called prompting. There's even prompt engineers these days who really specialize in the way you ask it to come up with the answer. And the better you prompt, the more specific you are, the better you answer. And honestly, you'll be blown away. And most recently in ChatGPT+, there's a great new feature and that's called 
custom instructions. So here you can really feed ChatGPT with all the information about you, your background, etc. So it doesn't have to ask you every single time. At the same time, you can also ask it how it wants you to respond. So I will say, obviously, to respond in an educated, smart, witty, funny way, use emojis, very relevant, my name is Kai, etc. So you can really feed it as much as possible. And knowing that, every new chat or every new question or task that you ask to do, it will answer, keeping that in consideration and answer accordingly, which really saves time and makes your answer already so much better than if you just ask it a blank question. So that's really something powerful that I believe right now is only with the Plus version. And if you haven't used it, really make use of custom instructions. It's so powerful. I wish they would have different profiles because sometimes I ask ChatGPT questions under my personal persona where I write, let's say, on LinkedIn for my current job, which is quite different from my YouTube persona, so to say. So there I would want it to answer a bit more professional in a different tone, language, and I have a different background, obviously, versus anything YouTube related where I want to be a bit more fun and casual, etc. So it would be cool if in the future they had two different profiles that you can switch between because sometimes when I now get the answer from my personal LinkedIn profile, it sounds quite different and then I have to tell it again, you know, I have this in this background, etc. But overall, really, really amazing tool. And another hack, how I love using ChatGPT is rather than typing all my instructions and questioning to here, which can sometimes be really long because I really believe in getting more context, writing a longer question than a one or two sentence question. So sometimes it can really take time. So instead of typing it, what I do is, and most computers can do that, and with Apple it's very easy. There's one button, is the voice input, very easy. I just press my microphone here. Please write me uh, 10 YouTube video ideas about personal finance and investing. Make those topics relevant, interesting, engaging, and centered around investing into dividend growing stocks. Boom, and just like that, ChatGPT gets to work, and I can sit back, get a coffee, wait for the ideas. And once I come back, I already have a list of ideas that I can start working on, etc. So it's really, really powerful. And it really saves me time because obviously that was still a short question. But sometimes I really ask it, for example, business ideas. And I really describe my ideal customer avatar and the things I want to do, etc. So it can be really a long instruction. And if I had to type it all out, it might be overwhelming. This way, I can just use my voice input and it will be so much faster. I believe the same could be done in Windows. And I think they also have voice input. So it's really, really powerful and it saves so much time. And boom, right here, I have a list of ideas that I can then later on, you know, if I like, for example, number four, I can ask to elaborate it, write me a script, etc. So then it's a good base to start working on it. Obviously, AI cannot do everything for you, but I really see it as a personal assistant, personal butler in a way, if you want, that helps you to optimize certain things, save time, and then you can layer your own creativity, your own touch on top of it. I think it just increases the baseline creativity, ability, and output of humans. But on top of it, I think the cherry on top is the human input element on there. So yeah, that's just my opinion on AI. And the cool thing is recently they also came out finally with an iOS app. I believe also on Android you can get it. You can just download it and you will have ChatGPT on the go in your pocket. And I really love it. And once again, it also has voice input. So you could basically ask it anything on the go to come up with some ideas, quotes, what have you. I sometimes use it if I do an Instagram post or caption that I have to write. I just asked it to come up something specific to the picture or whatever I'm posting. And on the go, I can just put it into Instagram, post it and boom, be done with it. So I really, really love it. At the same time, if I do deeper work, more research, etc., of course, I prefer using it on the computer. And honestly, the only limitation is in your mind and the questions you ask it. You could use it for so many things. In the beginning, as I said, I only used it for YouTube, but now I use it for so many things even how to become a better runner. I asked it to come up with a schedule. It gave me a running schedule and boom, now I follow that. Even sometimes I struggle coming up with recipes. You know, I have a specific diet. I'm on the keto, low carb diet. So I asked it to come up with new recipes. Boom, it gave me a list. And then you ask it, make it into a shopping list. I use a shopping list, send that shopping list to my task manager. And then when I'm in a supermarket and I can just tick it off and be done with it. So honestly, it's super, super powerful. I use it as a content calendar. I use it now to write my LinkedIn post, even write newsletters with it. And honestly, it saves so much time. Obviously, I'm going to make certain tweaks to it and so on. But as I said, the base at least is there and then you can elaborate because sometimes the worst, if you start staring at a blank page, you don't know where to start, it can really help you get started. Same with certain emails. It's not that I don't know what to reply. I may not have the time or desire to reply. Then I can just copy the email into ChatGPT, ask to reply in a friendly manner to the client offer, accept the offer, whatever it may be. And it will give you a nice reply. In most cases, it's let's say 90, 95% okay. Just copy it in and shoot back the email. So it saves me so much time. It's unbelievable. I used to have a PA 
in the company that I'm running. Uh, but now, honestly, since two years, I don't have any more. And with ChatGPT, I more than make up for it. And honestly, it's so, so powerful. And ultimately, the people who say, ah, it's not that good, honestly, look at the way they ask questions. Most likely, it's super superficial. So really make an effort to give as much context to it and ask deep questions. You will get amazing answers. You can come up with whole business plans the new business I'm building, I'm basically using ChatGPT as my personal consultant to ask questions, to challenge itself, to come up with the ideal customer avatar for the business. And it's just so powerful. Landing page copywriting, it will do for you. So it's really, really amazing. And even though you played with it maybe in the past, give it another go and really dive deep into it and try to incorporate it into your everyday living. The next one is Bart from Google, which is a free version. They don't have a paid version. And it's honestly quite good because it incorporates much more recent information. If you look something about a certain topic, for example, I could ask, give me a stock analysis on Apple stock and then it will get to work. And it's much more updated and uses latest market news, information, etc. So for that, it can be actually better. The answers though, to be honest, I do prefer ChatGPT. I just think they are more natural and sound better. And uh, they're kind of more by bullet points, but it's a good point as well. If you don't want to pay for JGPD, it's usually faster. It's always available, not down as many times. So it can be quite good. It uses more recent data. So if you want to do some research, it is actually quite good for that. And you can see over here different answers. For example, if you click on this over here, you can see two different answers. I can change the other one if I see a different one. And I even have a third draft that I can give you. And you can work with this and then obviously ask follow-up questions, elaborate on certain things. Um, so yeah. Somehow it's really good. I think they're gonna get better over time. I don't use it as much. Maybe if I want something really recent, I would use it. But most of the time is that I tend to use ChatGPT. Then another tool I started using recently, and that's called Firefly. Now Firefly in a way is an alternative to Midjourney. And Midjourney is something probably a lot of you heard about. It's basically a text to image generator. But I just found it very cumbersome, very difficult. You had to go through Discord. And I didn't really like the user experience. The output was very good if you spend the money and time to make it happen but I just didn't find it very user-friendly. I wanted a better solution. And recently Adobe came up with Firefly, which is now public and free of charge, at least for the time being, it might change in the future. It's really a cool tool and a much better in my eyes alternative. So they offer three main features. One of them is text to image over here. Another one is generative fills. You can barely replace certain parts of the image with something you want, or you can enlarge if you have a picture, a small picture of something, and it will then automatically add more details to the picture from AI based and you can even have text effect. So write anything you want and fill it with some kind of patterns or picture what you want. So it's really cool as you can see some nice letters. So with this, let's have a look into the text to image, which is the closest alternative to mid journey. So you can see over here already some beautiful pictures and samples, which you can see. And you can see how the prompt was done. Once again, it goes back to prompting the same with mid journey, the better you prompt, the better your output is. So you can see that over here. So for example, I want to come up with a new YouTube thumbnail and I could ask it a Bitcoin on the street cinematic look, go ahead, click enter, and it will take a second and we'll come up with a couple of first suggestions and boom is right here. Literally took a couple of seconds. I could change, of course, some of the things. Do I want the art, the graphic, um, you know, any kind of lightnings, the tone. So you can do some of the changes over here. But honestly, as a first draft, when I click into this, I mean, not bad, really. This is completely AI generated in a matter of seconds, free of charge. You know, I could obviously go in here and then make some tweaks to it, edit it, you know, take this, apply some filters, show similar, change a little bit. But overall, honestly, it's pretty good. You can change the aspect ratio as well. So really, really love it, considering that it's free of charge for the time being. Make use of it, you know, use it for your newsletters, for your YouTube thumbnails, whatever you have to. But I think it's an amazing tool. The next one I'm really using a lot, and that's also from Adobe. It's called Adobe Podcast. And basically what it does, you can upload any kind of audio that you recorded, either from a podcast, from a video, or any voice memo that you recorded. And often you might have some issues there where certain sounds peaked, the quality is very bad, or you have background noise because there was something happening, or you recorded in a noisy environment, or with a bad microphone, or only into your phone without an external microphone. And quite often it's really, really bad quality. Try it out, just upload the file over here. Obviously it goes only up to 30 minutes on the free plan and up to 500 megabytes. But most of the case, you know, that will be plenty and that resets every single day. It will take less than a minute and then you can download the file. And honestly, you'll be blown away by how much better it is. I use it for every single one of my YouTube videos, even though I'm using right now an external mic. Sometimes I don't feel like setting it up and I just record into my Mac and the quality is not that good. But after you upload into here, it sounds like you recorded it 
with a professional microphone. It also silences transitions. If, for example, I make a hard cut between my two sentences, it will automatically fade out and then fade in the new sentence. So it's really super nice. It's free of charge. And that's something I really use a lot. Even my wife, she has a podcast and sometimes, you know, she records in a noisy environment. She asked me, can you make my sound better? And it really sounds quite bad recorded on the phone. Then I download it, put it through here, upload it, send it back to her. Takes me a couple of minutes. And honestly, it's like day and night. So definitely check this one out as well. And the last AI that I really use on a daily basis, and that's called KAI. Yes, you guessed it. That's me. Actually, what I mean by it is your own mindset, because ultimately that drives everything else. If you don't develop and stay up to date with what's happening, how you can use those tools, ultimately you're gonna have the best tools in the world. But if you don't use them and don't know how to use them, you know, they are meaningless because you as the user need to tell the machine what to do to use it to your own advantage. And I know a lot of people say all oh, this AI is not really nice. It's not good for humanity, but guys like it or not, it's not going to go anywhere only going to get more in the future. And that's why I said, you know, we need to use the tools to our advantage rather than sitting back and say, oh my God, I don't know anymore what to do with all this AI. So be on top of it, invest in it, be smart with it, use it for yourself. And honestly, it can get you so much further than many other people who neglect it. As I said, I do think it's important to keep up to date. And for that, I really love read an amazing newsletter all around AI and that's called Superhuman. This is not an affiliate or anything. It's free of charge. I don't get anything out of it if you sign up. This newsletter comes on a daily basis. It's really powerful and it always comes up with some new ideas, new stories, new tools. And honestly, after reading this, there's at least one new tool that I will go out, experience, try it and just stay on top of things, how certain things work. So I really found it powerful considering that it's free of charge i really think you should sign up to this and yeah just once again use ai to your advantage rather than one day being controlled by ai i hope you found this tools useful and i'll be very interested to hear from you what is your favorite ai tool you're using at the moment let me know in the comments below next up check out this video over here as always stay healthy get wealthy and i'll see you in the next one ciao